Okay, we're back again live here at IBM Pulse, IBM's premier cloud conference. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Chris O'Connor, VP of Strategy and Engineering for the Cloud and Smarter Infrastructure Group at IBM. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks. So I got to ask you, service management has been kicked around. We talked about it yesterday. IT service management, really growing area, changing area significantly with cloud. Um, so I want to ask you, what is IBM's definition of service management? It's a lot broader than other vendors, which might be narrower. Give us a quick, we'll start there, and then we'll jump right in. So, so when I think of service management, I think of a, a full process life cycle around the necessary components to support your total production environment. So whether you're a retailer or a distributor or a phone maker, whatever you do, it's being able to manage your servers, your life cycles, your people, the automation that goes along with it, the virtual processes around things like your databases and your stores and uh, your applications, as well as being able to run the continuity of all those things together. I, at VMworld, I asked Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of VMware, is, is hybrid cloud a halfway house? to a final destination uh, of, of some sort of implementation. And he said, no way, it's, 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 it, is, it is the destination. So, so you know, we, that's clearly the case now. Hybrid cloud is the strategy for enterprises for that balance. We were talking, not just migration, but that's going to be a reality. There's a challenge there. There's got stuff all over the different clouds. You Salesforce are all around. You got on-premise. But pulling it all together is a challenge. What are, what are you guys doing on the service management side to make that easier and, and, and describe that, that dynamic? So, so the first thing that hybrid projects have to do is, is I think you had to embrace it. And, and that's one of the big steps we're taking here at the show today, is, is we are embracing the notion of hybrid cloud, and that's, that's a huge challenge that, that many can't do or won't do. They'll, they'll try to take you down a path of talking about why it sits on site, or why you buy it only as a service. What we're literally introducing is the ability to understand what you need to optimize, where you need to innovate, and then look at the, the, the CapEx OpEx trade-off of blending those different capabilities together. So we're adding as a service capabilities to the portfolio, we're not replacing things. We're, we're actually taking everything we do with service management, we're adding the as a service capabilities to go with it, so you can decide when you want to just hand out control to that line of business that needs to move quickly and agilely, and when you need to optimize around maybe systems of record that are core assets for your business, and you want to do that due to either privacy or data protection or other things, on-site and on-prem, and, and have those work seamlessly together. So, so we're embracing it. I think the biggest challenge is, is to get that embrace done when you, when you look around at what you're doing. So Chris, would you agree that it's been hard historically for CFO, some CFOs anyway, to sort of justify an investment in service management specifically within IT? Uh, so that's the first question, and is that changing? So, so I think where, where people have been caught is they've understood they need to make the investment. They've been looking at the speed of value that they can get back. Mm -hmm. and, and in that becomes the struggle. And they compare it to other things, right? That's right. And that's other right. things pop up, and it that's always right. gets put to the back burner. That's right, so, so one of the things that we're doing is that service management becomes an as-a-service delivery to let them innovate very quickly. It means you don't have to go on site, you don't have to run the POC, it means you don't have to buy extra servers, it means you don't have to heat, chill, run, manage, patch manage, you know, the environment, just to get ready to do service management. You can get started and you can, and you can implement quickly so they can include it. And because you can do that CapEx, OpEx trade-off, you know, they can rent it for a little while while they experiment, and they can decide whether they want to purchase later on, and, and that gives us a beautiful so, blend for them to move agilely. So by as a service, you mean as uh, software as a service, or? Um, I do. Okay, and they can eventually choose to whether or not they want to put it on-prem or in, in a SaaS, or is your direction to go totally SaaS? So our direction is to support both models, yeah, right. and, and to support also the CapEx, OpEx model, both of them, because we think that your budget is never going to be pure OpEx, it's never going to be pure CapEx, it's going to be a blend of the two. Depending on what you're doing for different projects, you're going to want to move very agilely, and you may want to plug and, and run very quickly with uh, as-a-service offerings. You may choose as that hardens and becomes critical structure to bring that in-house or to regionalize or geographically orient that in some structure on-site, and, and we're bringing out the, the ability to run seamlessly across our on-prem and our new as-a-service offerings, and, and you decide the, bend, the balance and blend. And Chris, there are adjacent well, line of business you know, uh, disciplines that have similar dynamics to IT service management. Um, where is IBM at in terms of bringing that discipline out toward the business? So, so we, an affectionate term could be shadow IT. We, we see it all the time where somebody's trying to innovate quickly. They're out in the line of business. Sometimes they, not so affectionate. They, 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 <laughs> they, they've, got, they've, got a, they've, got a, they've got a budget that's out there that they can spend against and, and they're out there and they're implementing and they're bringing in programming talent and then they're trying to figure out how they're going to keep it up and keep it reliable from that paradigm point of view. 
our as a service offerings are designed for them to be able to plug it in. It can be given to them by the IT shop saying, hey, you guys go innovate and when you're ready, bring it back. It can also be direct purchased by them because we're enabling systems management to be credit card purchased by one of these shadow IT organizations and they can bring it in and they can use that as a way to get started with their innovation as well and have performance management and ticketing and job scheduling and other things be reliable services they can just subscribe to. So, okay, so these would be line of business driven, as you say, shadow IT. What about developing apps you know, on top of the core service management platform? Is that where Blue Mix comes in? Maybe you could talk about that. Uh, that's absolutely correct. So what, what we see is that people are moving to a composable application development environment, Blue Mix launched here at the show. It's a perfect example of that. The new capabilities we made, software as a service, developed on Bluemix. We used our own cooking to make the apps that, that went out as a service. We, we, see, uh, we see that uh, you know, the Bluemix environment is going to need composable management elements inside of it as well. So things such as our collectors, our APIs, and things like that are included in the IBM Bluemix environment. So as you build your app, you're pre-instrumenting for service management to be applied right on top of that as that app goes into runtime state. So how should we look at the marketplace for service management? It's, it's clearly evolving into line of business, you're talking about application development on top of Bluemix and things like that. Um, how big is this space? You know, even in rough terms, uh, is, it, is it growing? And, and how much more potential is there beyond core IT? So, a couple, couple of flavors of discussion here. One is it's, it's a growing market. In the traditional IT space, it continues to be a growing market. There are pockets of it where the evolution is taking place and it's changing and it's evolving, but the entire need for the structure of being able to, to manage components as a service, as a catalog that become part of this composable environment, that's a, that's a tremendously growing market in the IT arena. <clears throat> and then you took it an extra step, and this is one of the areas that we invest in as, as, as IBM as well, uh, which is the Internet of Things, which is the digitalization of everything that you see taking place from your camera to the yellow truck that's bringing ore out of a mine to, to things that you might have walking down the street. All of those things are emitting tremendous amounts of digital in, information and they become part of the same life cycle of being able to understand whether your, 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 your assets are delivering value and really service management sits at that core simple definition. It's about ensuring the assets of your business are delivering the value to what it is you produce and, and the internet of things, uh, you know, connectivity is there, it's real. We have a component of our portfolio, it's called the Maximo Components. It's where we bring in all of those other asset types and literally we're in jet airline engines, we're in yellow trucks coming out of mines, we're in things that are around delivering telco class services and, and we use the same service management paradigm to manage those devices, keep them up, keep them running, keep them healthy, know when they're about to break, use analytics to look in advance of what they're about to do uh, as we do inside of the data centers at the same time. It's, 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 a, it's a shell. That's um, what I, I was going to get right there to that next question. You know, you nailed it. I wanted to just get your point on the analytics. The big data piece, obviously, you didn't have things. It's sensor data, it's little data, it's fast data, it's all kinds of data. On the analytics side, critical key piece. How is that changing the game? You got gamification, you got analytics, you got predictive analytics. How does all that integrate into the service management portfolio relative to some of the things you were mentioning about cloud? It's a great question. The, the world is instrumented like you can't believe today. And so we have buckets of, of data sitting all around the place that people say, yeah, I collect that. I don't quite know what to do with it yet and I don't know how it relates to other pieces of data around it as well. We're, we're here launching some of the capabilities that we took out of the IBM Watson capabilities that allows us to reduce that to a math problem, being able to take your buckets of data compare them in real time to your other buckets of data and tell you the correlations, the relationships, the analytics, the anomalies taking place inside of that. And, and we use that in a service management construct. So we've oriented what was in Watson. Instead of answering Jeopardy questions, we're answering IT questions with what's inside of our predictive insights capabilities. And those predictive insight capabilities take all of your buckets of bits, they align them in real time, build your historical baseline and do anomaly detection on top of that. And when you want to go deep, we have log analytics to allow you to go deep into an area and go search and find and it takes and, and it takes it. we we got the big data SV um, just two weeks ago we were talking about it was called the, not a data lake a data landfill because it's essentially <laughs> buried data that they store what you're referring to is essentially turn that landfill into a on demand asset that's right and and the model is that Watson advises humans or Watson and some infrastructure takes action. Watson, in this case, is what it's, what it's doing is we took the predictive capabilities out of it and it builds the anomalies. So it watches what's going on in, in your data landfill and it builds you a set of anomalies 
that you might want to go, go look into. Those anomalies can be automated triggers into your existing automation. You have an event or alert, stop here, go here. Or they can be human uh, causes for you to investigate. It takes that landfill and turns into energy. So we'll take the new paradigm of clean energy and call it clean data, Dave. Uh, it's kind of a new buzzword we can call clean data. It's a whole new industry developing. Chris, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. I know you're tight for time. Love to spend more time with you. This is great. Uh, clarification on a couple things and, and to drill down on some others. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, this is theCUBE, exclusive coverage from theCUBE and Wikibon here at SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, live in Las Vegas for IBM Pulse, IBM's premier cloud conference. We'll be right back.